Hello everybody and welcome to What's in the Box. Myself and Sam are back and this time we're going to the 41st Millennium with yeah. Rogue Trader, the Kill Team expansion. I'm very excited to see this as the Rogue Traders are one of the more interesting elements for me of the 41st Millennium. I'll admit I don't know that much about them, so I'm looking forward to digging into this and finding out a bit more about what they do in the world. Well, we, we do know they are basically what it says on the yeah. tin. They are starship captains doing some shitty dealings world to world. Yeah. Did you ever play the uh, the old RPG? No, 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 no. I'm oh, not that it's old. Good. <laughs> it's good. No, no, no. I mean the the, the one that used to be played by Fantasy Flight Games. Uh, no, I played Dark Heresy. Oh, still a great game. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Yeah. All right, so the box itself, the artwork on the front is gorgeous. Now, I will say our one got a little bit damaged in the post just here and here. Not a big issue. It's just a box. It'll be thrown away after you're done mm. with it. Good looking though. It is. I really like the artwork they've mm. gone for. That and the way they've chosen the factions this time, because you have the Rogue Traders and some Nurgle faction guys. Yes. But they're weird Nurgle because they're actually a mix of technological and biological. So I think they're called the Gelapox infected. Yeah. So if I quickly flip this over, the first thing that jumps out for me is this. This is a completely different type of board. We're playing inside a spaceship, mm. which I like the idea of. So you've got all your bulkhead doors and stuff. These nice 3D terrain elements are something that always set a game off to me. And, oh, wow. <laughs> Someone's got some indigestion. Oh, well, I, I think I know the one you're talking about. We'll, take, we'll get a look at them yeah. soon enough. All right, well, we'll crack open the box. So there you go. Thank you. Right. So let's start getting a look at what we get in the box. So first things first, we get the really nice manual that you always get from Games Workshop showing all the miniatures beautiful and painted. You then got your nice 3D instructions going for each of them. And I like the fact they're going for the individual pose stuff with these. So mm. not a lot of customization options, but you get some really cool looking miniatures but once you're done. That makes sense for a... Uh, a a skirmish focused faction. I mm -hmm. doubt we're going to see a rogue trader army or anything, well, particularly at least not dedicated. Rogue trader, yeah, you would never see them feeling yeah. as a full military force. So that makes sense that they these would be those single pose sculpts because you're going for that individual character in a skirmish game. Yeah, that and it's it's a member of a crew that they're going to be telling a bit of a story about in this box. Yes, and exactly. I will lay you odds there are story missions in this. There are, I believe. I looked on the back. It says there's a number of scenarios to take you through the uh, take you through the conflict between the U Elucidian Star Striders and the Gelapox Infected. <laughs> okay. Uh, next layer down, we've got our stat cards. I see we've got some blank ones here, which is something I always like. So if you want to actually start statting these up on your own, you've got the option to do that, I believe. Blank. Uh, let me quickly. In fact, sorry, you cracked that. Yeah. One. I like the fact that they're not doing these as the. This isn't blank. The seals. Okay, I could be wrong. Yes. Now this is. Uh, we've got some of the cards here, or the Lord. Yeah, words trying to read upside down. <laughs> uh, the Lord of Resentment, uh, Vulgar the Thrice Cursed. Mm. So you've got some character ability cards and stuff in here, which are quite nice. Yeah, if we look over those stack cards, as yeah, you, you get them here. Yep. So if I put them the right way up, would be helpful. Yeah. So as you can see, they're not blank. They're, these are for the sludge grubs. Uh -huh. So I assume those are some of these. The little nasty guys. Yeah, if we take a look at the pi the picture on the front of the book, where we can see some of them. Yeah, you've got all the. Well, if I move this box, that's why I set it flat. Yeah. Yeah. They are quite nice. So yeah. you've got all of these that are going to give you all the stats. This is something I really like to have in these games because it sort of takes the, the thinking out of it a little bit. One of the things I used to hate for old Warhammer 40k was trying to build my lists. Really? Yeah, I used to hate list building just because of the way it was laid out, that you had to add this, then add equipment, then add like special bits. It just it always felt over overcooked to me. This just makes life simple. That Fair uh, enough. leaves tracking your stuff on the table really simple. Next up, some miniatures. So we've got two sprues of miniatures. Big one for the Nurgle, little one for the Rogue Traders. Let's go with the Rogue Traders first. So, looking around it, the detail is what we've come to expect from Games Workshop. It is razor sharp, and the style of these guys is super, super ornate. Look at this. This uh, person here with the, the frilled mask and the, the little pistol coming up out of the, the scroll worked uh, holster. Mm. Uh, down the backs of stuff, you've got tons of engraved detail. These things are going to take washes and just look absolutely gorgeous. 
Uh, you've got some last weapons in here. Ooh, we have a minigun. <laughs> I wonder what that counts as in the game. I know they won't call it a minigun. Uh, you've got some technical bits. You've got someone carrying what could possibly be a med pack. I'm not sure. And you've got some nice scenic basing bits in yeah. here too. Now, uh, there are actually one or two things I, I wanted to point out about this. Yeah, they're very good, nice sculpts mm -hmm. with beautiful detail. But some of the posing is quite interesting for me. Because um, particularly this one, if we uh, bring uh, yeah, this I up. Can, I can bring this up for you. That is a very old hammer stance right there. Maybe, maybe. Does... We'll wait until they're all built and then yeah. we'll be fit to tell better because I do want to get these built. Yeah. All right, next on to the Nurgle side of things. There are some big miniatures here. So if, if you like your, your big Nurgly stuff, this is going to be for you. Who doesn't? Yeah. So we've got all of our little guys dotted around. They all seem to be like single piece, so that's going to be real, really simple. Oh, I love this little guy. Look. He's fighting with a broken ball. <laughs> uh, we've then got the big guy here with a huge meat cleaver. And it looks like he's got a butcher's apron. And down in the belly, you've got these mouths just Ooh, screaming out at you. That Getting is... that kind of deep detail into a sculpt like this is very, very nice. That's very unsettling just in its design. Yeah. Uh, moving across, we have another one. And this is the guy who has the indigestion because he has like little fire demons in his belly. I think that might be, what well, obviously you called him Volgar. Possibly vulgar. Yeah. We've then got some of the more standard infantry. Uh, we've got another big guy here with just like big massive hook claw arms, which is bleh. Then we've got all the little sort of bug-like creatures as well, different weapons, and this which appears to be a swarm flying out of someone's chest. Interesting games workshop. Interesting design. Now this is uh, just the whole concept of this box I really like mm. because as you pointed out, they're playing that you're playing the game in the confines of a spaceship. Yeah. So it's that sci-fi horror of you're in this environment trapped with former crewmates warped beyond belief. Yeah, we then get two identical sprues of the 3D elements for the board, which are really hefty. These things have a fair chunk to them. Mm. So you've got things like big bulkhead doors, steam pipes, control consoles, uh, more control consoles. You also have a coffin or a crypt of some sort here, or maybe just a chest. Again, yeah. very ornate, very nice. You've got a captain's chair here, and uh, you've got some perhaps servitor stations, maybe? Possibly. Hmm. Possibly. Very nice. This one is more of the same. Uh, again, yeah. lots I think of they're, they're absolutely identical. Yeah. yeah, they look to be, yeah. They are. Oh, Let's perfect. <laughs> I do like the design of them, though. I think the great aesthetic of that 40k has going for it is the gothic, and this is really turning into that. It, oh yeah, they're leaning yeah, into it. Yeah, it's uh, it's very ornate, very gothic, and at the same time, brutal in its uh, yeah, in its design design quality. Yeah, no, still in the box, we have a core rule sheet which just folds out. This looks to be exactly what you would use for the 40k game. Mm. Now, it is important to note you do need a copy of the Kill Team book to play this game. Yeah. Well, this is only an expansion. Yeah. You yeah. then get the tokens for the Nurgle side and a second sheet with them for the Rogue Trader side. Mm -hmm. We then get the board itself. Now, this, to me, looks as if it's individual pieces you're going to set together, and it is double-sided. Shall I crack that open while you show them the book? Yeah. Well, there are three books. Oh, wonderful. So if I pop this out of the way, I'll quickly show them, because what you get... I, I would crack this open if I had fingernails. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we get the, the Rogue Traders book. So this is going to give you a little bit of an insight into who the faction is, who you're playing with, and some of the stats that they're going to be using. Also, it's going to show off at least one of the, the missions here. So that's the ship layout. And then if I keep clicking through, this is the other layout. So this looks more like a base or something you find, which is it's nice to have the, the different areas. You then get into the rules. We're playing the game, and actually, I think this might actually be the main scenario book. Mm. This is your faction books. So, you've got these guys giving you all their information and their stats, which are looking really good, and some stratagems if you want to use them. And then the rogue traders or star striders, however you want to call them, same again. Mm. Right. I'm looking is forward this, to digging into their background. Is this all linked together, or is it individual? This is linked together. This okay. Is a full fold out. No. Okay. Not free. There right. we go. So Sam, if you want to hold that up in front of yourself, we'll get a good look at it. Well, here on this, it's double sided as well. Yeah. So, so on got this starship. side, we have the starship. Yep. And if I just spin that round, <laughs> ah, careful. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. It is segmented. Ah, it looks like an Inquisition place. Possibly. Uh, well, not possibly. It, it's got the Inquisition symbol on there. Does it? It does. Put it down, you'll see. See? The stylized eye. Oh, yes, so it does. Right, well, I'll tell you what, Sam. Uh, let's take a quick break and I will build these. Okay, everybody, we are back. It is a new day. I'm going to say this now. There is a lot in this kit. Yeah. Nothing overly complicated, I will say. You know, most models were two, three components. I think some of the bigger guys, maybe five components. So nothing overly taxing. Gate locations were great. Everything clipped off the sprue beautifully. Uh, I will say the uh, the bigger terrain bits, some of the gates on those, there was quite a few of them. And I can understand why, because of the amount of detail. Well, have you seen? Look at all these gates. We've got plenty of gates. Yeah, well, yeah, well look, I, I, can, I can show them close up. Look. Yeah, so see? This Big gates. gates. But you see the amount of detail you have on there? So if you look down the side, you'll see one, two, three locations here across the top, one, two here, and across the bottom you have like five of them. Mm. But the the final effect, definitely worth it. Yeah, if even Especially just whenever you get like this on the tabletop. Yeah, I was just gonna say even just straight out the box, unpainted mm. on on the uh, mat, this looks it's quite pretty handsome. good. All yeah. right, now, uh, I'll quickly run through what terrain you get. So you get two types of bulkhead doors. So you've got the one I showed you, then you've got this one, which is more of a, a sliding door, I think. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, and if, if you look at some of the paint jobs that's been done on these, they are very, very pretty. Uh, so where did that door come from? That door's there, and we'll close that door. Uh, we get these chests, which are very nice. Yeah, they're yeah. one of my favorite touches of the whole thing because they really are ornate. Yeah, where whereas everything else is very uh functional, these have that element of gothic or yeah, ornateness for yeah. want of a better word. Yeah. That you expect from road trading. Control panels. So we get like four of these that you can scatter about. So I'm guessing I don't know if they actually play any role in the game or if they're just there to look pretty. Uh we then get a couple of big vents. These are really cool. So these were literally two pieces. Again, quite a few connection points to the sprue, but you're looking at a ton of details, so it's definitely necessary. Uh, what else? We've also got some skate pods, which we can do in the open format, mm -hmm. or we can do them in the closed format. So it is a really nice touch to have. And then you've got a little access panel at the back here if you want to paint this stuff up. I've done a mixture of yeah, them one open more. and closed. One more all important thing, captain's chair. Of course, of course. You get uh, two of these. Yeah. Uh, again, they were a little more awkward to clip off the sprue because you see under the armrest here is just where one of your connection points is. So just be careful of that. But yeah, it gives you a very cool looking two point five D table with tons of terrain. Now onto the forces. Uh, where would we like to start with these, well, Sam? why don't we start with the titular rogue traders themselves? Okay, uh, well... Because I know you're very excited for these ones. I do like them. They're a very, very nice set. So I've, I've got the book here just because it's going to be the easiest way to identify everybody. Mm. Now, uh, there is the old question of what is a rogue trader? Okay. So these are basically people within the Imperium who are charged with going out, finding new worlds to claim for the Imperium. Yes. Because, let's be honest, with Chaos Invasions and stuff at the minute, the number of Imperial worlds is going down pretty damn quickly. So these guys are out on ships trying to sort of find new worlds, you know, create yeah. new trade relations, maybe even find the odd old uh, civilization. Right. Uh, yeah, the true start... explorers of the galaxy. Yeah. So uh, let's start working through this, shall we, Sam? Yes, let's. So, I take it we start with the captain of the ship herself. Uh, no. Oh? So, we start with this gentleman. I will let you read the names, and I will grab the minis. That is Larsen van der Graus. So that is this gentleman here. He looks like some form of tech priest. A electro maester, apparently. Ah. Well, you know, you need someone to keep the ship running. So, tons of detail. But like you said, it does kind of have that old hammer feel with the, the 2D-ness of the poses. Mm. But... Absolute tons of detail. You're going to have a lot of fun painting this guy. Who's next? Well, after Larson, we have uh, Sanastasia Minst, who Ooh, is that's this one. the, I think, some sort of medical officer. Uh, yeah, looks like yeah. A, a surgeon. Re Re sorry, because nothing is just a medical officer in for the gay. It's the Rejuvenat Adept of the, uh, the oh, Order's right, so Hospitaller. So yeah. actually, uh, that would suggest to me this is quite possibly not so much a doctor, more plastic surgeon. Okay. Because, let's be honest, some of the, the more 
high-ranking members of Imperial society can afford to actually have a few years shaved off. In some cases, you'll have a 50-year-old dam who looks like she's 20. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. Next. Uh, following on from her, we have... Ah, a death cult executioner, Nosso Prond. Yes. So, this is her here holding the head of one of the, the mutants she's killed. Because why not? You know, yeah. Take trophies. I like the fact that you're getting little bits of nice basing stuff done here. I, I absolutely love this model because it reminds me a lot of some of the uh, classic art you used to see coming out for 40k. Mm. Uh, I've suddenly forgotten the artist's name. Oh. <laughs> I, any other time you asked me, I would have known their name. But yeah, uh, yeah. I, it's got that great gothic look to them. Yeah. Okay, next up. After them. I think it's the normal... Normal troops, who are the Voidsmen. Okay, I believe that's going to be these gentlemen here. Yeah, they do have names. Uh, there's Voidsmen, Rege. Uh, let me see, that that one standing with his hand out, that's Voidsman Shalkus. So this guy? Yeah. Alright, so that's Shalkus. I did enjoy this one because the way they've actually designed it is really clever. So the entire back section, they had already molded on the arm and the hanging last gun. And I believe the other arm as well. So it was very cleverly designed on Games Workshop's part. And the other guy with the, the rifle pointed down. The rifle pointed down. Is he holding a cigar? No, he isn't. That's Voidsman Theolus. Theolus. Okay. Uh, yeah. I believe this is the gentleman holding the cigar you were on about. Yeah. That's Void Ma Voidsman Regays. Okay. I, I don't know how to pronounce that one. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah. Voidsman Grell is one of my favorites. Ah, uh, yes. The guy who we noticed in the first half of this video... Talking about a minigun. Yeah. I think he ain't got time to bleed. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. Uh, but again, lots of very, very cool detail. I love the, the way they've actually designed this guy. He looks like he's a little bit bigger, a little bit heavier. Uh, we then have a fella rocking around with a last pistol and combat shotgun. Yeah, if I just find his name, that's Voidmaster Niche. Yeah, I thought he would be there, Commander. Because in the classic style, he is pointing with a gun. <laughs> Of course. Uh, we then have the dog. Yeah, that because is Axamillion. Axamillion. But as anyone who's ever seen any of my skirmish game playthroughs know, that will be Pongo. Yeah, that'll be Pongo. That will be Pongo in space. And then the final one is the captain herself. Alucia Vane. Yeah. Now, this is a very cool design. I love the fact that she's essentially got a, a rapier and a, a dueling pistol. So it's, it's very classically designed. Yeah, it does have that renaissance, the over-the-top renaissance feel to it. Mm. I'm not so sure if I like the mask that she's wearing. Yeah, but... I'm not so keen on that myself. But when you've got a, uh, when you've got infected, uh, Nurgle spawned abominations running around, you might want something to cover up your nose and mouth. Yeah, I guess. Okay, so that is all of our our rogue traders. Indeed, they look the... absolutely fabulous. These are going to take washes and dry brushes gorgeously. Mm. So, super easy to paint. If you've got someone who's just new to painting, definitely a set I would recommend. Now oh, on to the, the Gelapox. The Gelapox Infected. Oh, Gelapox oh. Infected, yeah. Ah, I wonder, oh, it's a play on the Gellerfield. Yeah, exactly. I believe that just from the little I flicked through here before we started filming, mm. they something seem, seems to have gone wrong with the Gellerfield, mm. and that has led to this infection. I see. Well, I mean, like with some of the, the more human ones, you can actually see what their previous roles within the ship could have been. So, uh, who do yeah. we start with? Well, some of these... Uh, I, let's just start with the normal Void Shamblers, who are... Uh, these, these were, unfortunately, former crewmen. Yep. So let's pop these guys in here and get them pointed the right direction. Because for some reason they want to point that way. I guess they sense humans, sense food. But these are the guys here. Yeah, so the they're, they're quite similar, but oh. there's some really nice changes done to them. They're also called Gelapox mutants. Yeah. There's another term for them. So they're these horrific combinations of diseased flesh and machine. Yeah, I love this guy with the big axe. It looks like he's going to be really fun. Mm -hmm. Also, oh. I would suggest if you want to actually throw some variety into your pox walkers, these would probably sit quite well with those. Oh, definitely, yeah. Uh, following on from there, we have Glitchlings. Now, these are one of my personal favourites so of this. These yeah, are these, these little guys. So, these are, you know, little little guys that Nurgle has just went, yeah. oh, look at you, aren't, aren't you a cute little thing? I'll, I'll, yeah, 
And I think this one actually has what appears to be a wooden sword. Uh, yes, it is wooden in, in, the, in the painted... We can probably get an image of them brought up. Yeah. Well, they're, they're supposed to be cousins of the Nurglings themselves. Oh, I see. But I, I kind of like this a bit more in that they're, they are... Yeah, a fusion of... I'm just going to read. A fusion of machine plague and electrostatic static energy. Oh, you know why I want to paint these? How? Okay, so paint them blue, yeah. give them a lighter dry brush, and make them look as if they're little balls of energy. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah. and then, you know, I mean, like, oh... Well, Computer like, viruses yeah. come to life. Yeah, I mean, like, I would I would do it that way for, like, the main flesh and stuff, and then just have, like, the odd little bit where you would do a little bit of green with some slimy bits. Mm. It would look very cool. Yeah. After them, we have Nightmare Hulks. Now, there are three Nightmare Hulks yeah, in Yeah, these uh, are... No, not him. The big ones. Yeah, these three. So, I'll do them one at a time. So, now, you'll see instantly what I mean by what you can sort of see what the rule used to be on the ship. So, this fella, what do we think he used to be well, running around with a cleaver? His name is... I believe that's Nasha Screamer and two Nightmare Hulks. So yeah. he, that would be basically the unit champion. Yeah, but this guy, his previous role on the ship, what would you think it would be, just looking at his clothing? Um, Come on, it's easy. He would have to be the ship's cook. Hygiene officer. No, ship's cook. <laughs> With that big cleaver, he's definitely the ship's cook. And then we have a couple of Nightmare Hulks. So we have this poor fellow here. Who appear apparently is spawning uh, little flying wing things out of his shoulder. Yeah, that is so disturbing to that see. That is creepy. Nice big like tentacle here as well, and then we've got this guy who's just got all the tentacles, and looks like he ate everything in the galley before heading out. Yeah, pretty much, and it doesn't want to stay eaten. Yeah. <laughs> uh, very very cool designs. Where did he get the fish? He's got a fish just hanging from his belt. Um, he possibly worked in the galley. <laughs> You know, he was, he was maybe a supply officer. Mm. Okay. And, yeah, if we go down the scale a bit, there are mutoid vermin. And there are yeah. three types of these. Yeah, so if I start grabbing these in. So we first got the little flying bugs, which are really cool. I love, love, love this one, where it's just an entire swarm of them flying mm. out yeah. of some poor fellow's chest. Eye stinger swarms. Yeah. Uh, we've then got these guys yeah. who are flying in formation. They're probably practicing to be like the Red Arrows. <laughs> They're all called cool Ice Stinger Swarms uh, on the back, but they can also be Curse Mites. And, uh -huh. Yeah, so these are yeah Ice Stinger Swarms. Mm -hmm. And then there's also... Ah, I see, I see. Sorry, I got mixed up. These are the Curse Mites. If, yeah. No, no, not those. Okay, so it's just all of these. What about these? I think these would well, be Curse Mites. Yeah, those would be Curse Mites, not... Not him. I. Yeah. Sorry, my bad here. I misread one of the pieces. Yeah. So, so those are the curse, curse mites. mites. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm I'm guessing these are literally just cannon fodder to throw at stuff. They're probably not going to be overly powerful. No. But they yeah. are cool looking. And again, the the level of detail that's sculpted into these. Get these painted. Get a wash down on them. Get a, a dry brush, and you are done. Yeah. So super quick to actually get on the tabletop. And then the last of these little guys are the sludge grubs. Sludge grubs. Yeah. And I love the variation we're getting on these as well. Yeah. They are one of the most varied factions I've seen for Kill Team. And it's great to have these dedicated Kill Team factions, as I said earlier. Mm. Yeah. These are really disgusting. These are creepy. And you got this little guy with that, the stinger. That one in particular, I find very disgusting. Look at his yeah. mouth. Look, there's a little face here. Oh, there's oh. a human face here. Oh, wonderful. Uh, no. We have one last model for the Gellapox infected. Yes, which is the big boss yep. himself. That is Volgrath Thrice Cursed. Yeah. Who used to be. The uh, engine master of the starship New Dawn. Yeah, and again, you can see it with sort of the the mechanical aspects that he has in him. Yeah, now he's known as Old Boiler Guts. Yeah, well, you know, he's he's got little fire demons in there. You know, he must have had a spicy meatball. Aye. I have to say, these look like they would be incredibly fun to paint. You know, just with the, the mix of biological and technological, just blending one into the other, you could have yeah. a lot of fun with this. Now, when this set was announced, I was at first most excited to see the Rogue Traders, because mm -hmm. we hadn't really seen them on the table yes. uh, 
at least probably not since the original Rogue Trade. Well, it's it's one of those things. This is this is allowing us to explore maybe a sect of Imperial yeah. society that we haven't seen before. Yeah. Well, uh, as I was going to say, the thing that now I see them, mm. the ones I'm most excited for, are the Galapox infected. But I'm the Nurgle guy in the yeah, office. Yeah, I know, but these guys, in a way I've never seen Games Workshop do before, explore body horror. Yeah. In a utterly disturbing way yet it fits it yeah. fits very well yeah i mean like you you can imagine what has happened it's it's a normal day on the ship they're traveling mm. through the warp and all of a sudden from the engine room you hear oh crap yeah pretty much <laughs> then the captain's just going uh engine room we, we, I, we've lost power are you can, saying can this are you saying that their engine room was overseen basically by arnold rimmer yeah, possibly. He possibly. didn't fix a drive plate properly. Now everyone on the Red Dwarf are mutants. Well, I mean, like it's you can sort of see that the the command areas, the bridge and the secure yeah. areas, would be more heavily shielded. Yes, than some of the outer areas, like the engine room, like the galley. You know, these are less critical areas, so you can you can understand why the the narrative would be that this is where the mutation has taken hold, mm. and why now suddenly the rogue traders are going. Oh my god, he owed me 10 Imperial credits. Crap. Bang. Headshot. Yeah. We've got to land this thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, it wouldn't even be landed. It would just be like, Navigator, get us out of the warp right now. I don't care where we're ending up. Just get us out of the warp now. Yeah, pretty much. Because hopefully, once you're out of the warp, if it's just demonic possession, that might go away. <laughs> I, don't, I, I, I don't think that's going away. <laughs> I don't think that's going to You know, the, the, from the look of these guys, wherever they go, that's going to leave a stain. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, everybody, that has been the, the Geller Pox and the Rogue Traders from the, the new Kill Team box set. I'm loving it. If you're looking to get into it, if you and me are considering it, very characterful. You're getting lots of cool terrain that you can use to actually play your games out. You're getting the double-sided game board in there. Everything you need to play is in this box. Tell you what, drop us a comment below, tell us what you yourselves think, and we will move on and we will see you again very soon. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now, and be sure to check out beastofwar.com for the latest gaming news and gaming let's plays. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on. <laughs>